Personal violence happens on college campuses all over the United States. It also happens off campuses, and it can have a powerfully negative impact on those who experience it. So why does this kind of violence happen? College campuses are a part of a larger American culture, and many scholars warn of a rape-prone culture where prevalent attitudes, norms, and behaviors excuse, minimize, and even encourage sexual violence. This environment creates stereotypical beliefs about women, men, sexuality, and power that can lead to a whole range of negative consequences. These stereotypes are reinforced through images, ideas, and conversations we are exposed to every day. Without careful thought, we may simply accept them as a way of life. One of the most important things we can do to protect ourselves against this kind of violence is to clearly distinguish the myths from the facts. Myth. People lie about sexual assault. Fact. The vast majority of sexual assault reports are true. Not believing a survivor is emotionally damaging, and it lets others know that they won't be believed if they come forward. Myth. Only strangers commit sexual assault. Fact. Stranger assault represents less than 18% of sexual assaults. The overwhelming majority of sexual assaults occur in familiar places and with people we trust. Myth. Provocative clothing is a risk factor. Fact. Whether you're wearing a short skirt or snow pants, the only risk factor is the presence of a rapist. Whatever the reason behind a person's choice of wardrobe, no one dresses to encourage an attack. Myth. Perpetrators cannot help themselves. Fact, we are all conscious of and able to control our own actions. When we say perpetrators can't help themselves, we excuse their actions and place blame on the survivor. Myth, real sexual assault is always physically violent. Fact, the overwhelming majority of assaults, 82%, are perpetrated by acquaintances, friends, or family members who use coercion to assault. Coercion, including pressuring, guilt tripping and intimidating can be just as forceful and disempowering as physical violence. Myth. Sexual assault can be an accident. Fact. Sexual assault is never an accident. It is not valid that the perpetrator claimed that they received mixed messages and didn't know the person was consenting. When someone wants to stop and the other person wants to continue, the burden and responsibility to stop is entirely on the person who wants to continue. Myth. Sexual harassment is flattering. Fact. Wolf whistling, catcalling, or honking is not flattery, but gender bullying. Sexual harassment involves a one-directional communication that occurs without the consent of the individual. Myth. Men cannot be sexually assaulted. Fact. 60% of males in the secondary schools are sexually harassed and 1 in 10 men are sexually assaulted. Sexual violence can be experienced by any person of any gender. Much of what we accept as inevitable is, in fact, the expression of values and attitudes that can change. And we can change them. We have that power. Working together, we can create a campus and a society in which sexual violence of any kind is a thing of the past. Let's go back to that first myth. Some of you may have heard statements about how women sometimes make false rape reports and that men should be scared of being falsely accused. Don't buy into that myth. Recent studies show that very few reports of sexual assault are false. It's time to stop perpetrating the myth that no means yes, or that no response means okay to have sex. And it's time to stop asking questions about what people were wearing, drinking, or doing when they were victimized. Victim blaming hurts everyone, men and women, their friends and family, all of us, and ignores the real problem, rapist. Only yes means yes.